Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and today we're gonna to be drawing something that honestly, kind of creeps me out, gives me the creeps. <laughs> I don't really like spiders and one of the biggest spiders of them all is a tarantula. And I know for a fact that they creep me out because I found one in my backyard when I lived in Texas. <laughs> and my wife doesn't like spiders either. But just because they give me the creeps doesn't mean that they're bad. They're actually really, really cool creatures and they're even more fun to draw. So let's make sure that we have everything we need to get started and let's go. All right, make sure you have a nice clean sheet of paper out. You're gonna need a sharpened pencil, of course, with some type of eraser handy because when we do our sketching, we make mistakes and that's perfectly fine. That's part of the process. And we're gonna need that eraser, especially after we do our outlining uh, with a dark marker or a pen like I have here. And at the very end, we're gonna do some coloring, which is gonna be a whole lot of fun because they do come in lots of different colors, uh, which surprised me. I thought they were just kind of one brown or black color. I guess I didn't know what color they were, um, but they do come in multiple colors. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our sketch. Now I have my page here, vertical here in portrait mode, um, but I also am gonna be using symmetry. Do you remember what symmetry means? Basically it means if you put a line right down the middle of your paper, what you draw on this side is gonna look identical to this side. It's like a mirror image of itself. So you're gonna see the same thing on both sides. So in some ways that makes our lives easier, but in other ways it's a little bit tricky. And the way it's tricky is because you have to draw the same thing twice and try to make it look like it's accurate. So luckily we're not going for perfect, we're going for fun and, uh, and make it look like a tarantula. That's what we're going for today. So let's start with our main shapes of the body of our tarantula. All right, so let's start with a circle right here in the middle. Right about there. It doesn't have to be very big. Just draw a little circle there, right there in the middle, or as close to the middle as you can get it. All right, so let's draw the abdomen now of our tarantula. And let's say it's gonna end about here. So I'll put a little dot there. And I'm gonna put a little dot maybe like right here. So these sometimes help me know exactly where my lines are going to end up, especially if I'm trying to do something symmetrical. So what I'll do is I'm gonna make this like a fat leaf shape. I'm gonna go like this, like that. Go out here. Or if you're into sports, like a fat football <laughs> shape. There we are. I'm, I, I might even wanna go wider than that. Let's see. Maybe go a little wider over here. Something like that. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect right, right now, we can always go back and fix it. They also have really big fangs. Now these are what kind of make them kind of scary to me is I know spiders have fangs, but seeing the fangs, because they're very visible, because these spiders are so big. Sometimes their leg span can get up to like 11 inches. That's a really big spider. So you can see all their, even their eyes and things that we're gonna draw here in a second you'll see all that stuff, which sometimes you don't see on smaller spiders and things. And these giant fangs, they use to paralyze their prey. So they eat bugs, but also bigger things like mice and even frogs. So they do eat bigger things and paralyzing them helps it so that they can eat them. That's also kind of a scary thought, but. Okay, so now we got those big fangs on there. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. Let's go ahead and start making sure we have all the legs. Now spiders have how many legs? That's right, they have eight legs. So instead of doing like the full thick leg that they have, because they do have really thick legs, uh, we're just gonna do a line first to kind of figure out where they all are and then we can add the thickness around them, if that makes sense. Here, I'll show you. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this, this first leg right here. I'm gonna do a little curve right about there. And then I'm gonna do a straight line kind of going at an angle up like that. And then I'm gonna do another one probably right around the middle, same thing. And you can draw these, I probably should do these a little bit lighter. Shouldn't draw them so, so dark, cause I'm gonna do some erasing here. And then I'm gonna go down like this, like that. There we are. Let's do, that's two, we got two more. And so let's do the one maybe right here and we'll have it kind of go up and then we'll have it go down over here. And then we'll do one last one kind of in this corner. We'll go out and then we'll have it go down. There we are. Got these big legs. Like I said, I saw it in person and they got these really big furry legs. They got a lot of hair on them. 
So we're gonna wanna do that, but let's go ahead and draw the same thing we did over here on this side before we get uh, any further here. So we're gonna draw the same thing over here. We're gonna try to match that, that angle that we're going at. Do the same thing. If it helps, sometimes you can kind of draw across to kind of see where um, the little points are and make those little points. So I'm gonna do the same thing, do a little curve right here, like this, and make that go down. Now they say they're pretty slow, which, I mean, relatively, yes, they are slow. But when I went and I tried to kind of poke at one with a, with a stick, it ended up running up the stick really, really fast and terrified me. <laughs> so in my experience, they're still pretty quick. Okay, so now, like I said, they have eight legs, but they also have two other ones that I thought were legs, but they're not. They're just little feelers to help them feel around. So I'm gonna draw this little curve. It's like a little backwards S right there. I'm gonna do another one right over here. It just helps them feel around for their food because they also are nocturnal. So they, that's when they hunt, they come out at night and they come hunt for things, so. Uh, which brings me to their eyes. So that's what we're gonna draw now. So they have eight eyes. We are only gonna draw, I guess you can draw as many as you want. If you wanna draw eight eyes, go ahead. Um, but they do have two big eyes, and then they have three little ones next to them on each side of each eye. So you'll have a total of eight eyes. You'll have these two, and then you'll have three on this side, and three over here. So why do you think they have so many eyes? It's because they can't move, they don't have a neck. <laughs> Notice that they don't have a neck, it's just part of their body. So if they wanna look that way or that way, they have to move their entire body, which is kind of dangerous when they're out there and they don't wanna be uh, eaten or they're trying to hunt. So they actually have these little eyes on the side to help them see over there. These ones help them, these, main, these big eyes, which I'm gonna draw some pupils in right now, some big friendly pupils. They, uh, they're more for shapes and colors and judging distance. That's, what, that's, why they have the, that's why they're bigger in the front, so they can see that. Then they have those other ones just to kind of help them out. That'd be kind of cool, huh? You have some extra eyes somewhere. I think we did that. We learned that about, I think it was the iguana. It has something called a parietal eye, and it's on the top. So if birds come, it can just see shadows and things like that. So if birds come, it warns them to move out of the way and it'll get picked off. Alrighty, so... I'm just gonna draw the two eyes. If you wanna draw all eight eyes, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but for just this drawing, I'm just gonna do the two eyes. And now I think we just need to go ahead and finish off these legs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and work on these ones first and work my way around them and kind of thicken them up. So you either can draw right on top of the, the line or you can draw right next to it. If you need to thicken it up, don't don't feel obligated to stick to that original line. It's just a guide for you. And then I'm gonna have this bigger leg right up here. There we are. Now we're gonna be kind of thick, so I'm gonna kind of go like this, and like that. Does that make sense? So then we'll go over here. And I might actually add a little bit more character to it, a little bit more of a bend or a curve to my legs. And that's okay, you can do that. Now that you already have this as your, your guide, then I'm gonna kinda have it go out so you can have the, yeah, we'll have the foot kinda go out a little bit like that. So it looks like it's standing on something. Let's start up here. Same thing maybe over here. And, there we are. Got the last leg right over here. I'm gonna do that in the back. I guess the last leg on this side. <laughs> we'll do the same thing over here. Oh, there we are. We got those big long legs. Now I just need to do that again on this side. But while we're doing that, I'm gonna try to do it a little bit faster this time. While we're doing that, let me tell you a little something about their legs that I thought was fascinating and it reminded me of another animal that we have drawn, which was a lizard. They can regenerate or regrow legs that they lose. Isn't that wild? I always think that is so fascinating. They actually molt and they shed part of their skin 
and they can, each time they molt, if they've lost a limb, which is like a leg, then they can actually grow it back eventually. That is incredible. I so wish that we could do that. Wouldn't that be cool if humans could do that too? We could grow back limbs. That would be a game changer. There we go. Now these are really big, heavy spiders. You're not going to really find these things climbing uh, too high. They like to stay more on the ground. And they actually burrow and live in the ground. That's where you find them. They actually live in the ground. There we go. And there we are. We got our spider legs and our big spider body. Okay, are we ready for the next step, which is, yep, I think we're ready for the marker. You know what, I did want to do one thing. I made these a little bit too big and it's never too late to fix things. Even when you do your pen, I know we always say it's permanent, but there's always ways to change things. You don't have to feel like stuck to anything you've made. You can always go back and change it, but it's easier when you're doing the pencil. So that's why I like to do this ske the sketching phase. Um, but yeah, and then I'll probably add some hair on here. Ooh, that'd be kind of fun. Add some lines because they are very, very hairy. I would say furry, actually. I don't think of furry insects too often. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my outline and uh, maybe we'll start here on the, the main part of the body. So like I said before, I actually found one of these in my backyard. Have any of you seen or held a tarantula? They're pretty cool. My son has held one in his hand. Now that wasn't one we found in our backyard, but we went to like a, a reptile zoo and we got to see a bunch of reptiles and they also had a tarantula, which is kind of cool. You got to hold on to and let it crawl around on his arm. I don't know if I could do that. He's braver than I am. Would you hold a tarantula or have you held a tarantula? It's pretty, pretty cool. I know a lot of people have them as pets because they aren't super aggressive. Let's do this. This leg. Right over here. Now what I might do is I might add some stripes, which I think would be kind of cool. So I'm gonna add little, little lines on here because a lot of times they'll have a striped coloring and patterns on their body. So I'll probably do that on all the legs, but I'm gonna draw the legs here first before I do that. So I found, like I said, I found a tarantula in our backyard, which was in Texas. And you can find tarantulas all over the world, actually. So they come or they live in very warm areas. And where I lived in Texas was very warm. They love the warm weather. So yeah, you'll find them all over the world in warm climates. Now, I kind of messed up on here, made it a little bit thicker down there, but you know what? Now I'm gonna just say that's what I meant to do. I wanted to make, maybe that was like a little shadow I added on the bottom of my, the bottom of my tarantula. <laughs> See, that's what us artists do. We're creative, we're creative problem solvers. Even if we created the problem, we can solve it. <laughs> all right, let's do this. There's another, could be seen as a mistake or that's just how I stylized it. And then I'll go through and do my little stripe patterns like this. I'll do that on all of them so that we have something fun to color in. And then I'll do the, no, oh, I'll even probably do the stripes here on these guys. Yeah, I like that. There we go. Now I'm not necessarily afraid of spiders. I'm afraid of snakes. I think I told you that. That is a legit fear of mine is snakes. But spiders, they just kind of give me the creeps. My wife, on the other hand, she does not like them. She is deathly afraid of spiders. 
But why is that? Why are we afraid of why are we afraid of spiders? Because because they can bite, or is it just the way that they they crawl around? What is it? I always find it fascinating to see what people are what kind of animals people are scared of. Because I wonder what it is about that animal that makes them so scary. Like you understand when people are afraid of sharks, but then you learn more about sharks. And you're like, wow, they're actually really cool. And most of the time they're not trying to get me. Makes you understand them more when you get to learn about them a little bit more. And that's what I love drawing and, and learning about animals. That's, that's what I love most about it is that I get to learn about them. And when I understand them and learn a little bit more about them, I may not judge them so harshly <laughs> and I may not treat them different because I understand why they are the, you know, why, why they're the way they are, which I think is important. We do that with people too, don't we? We kind of judge people before we actually know them or know everything about them. So just like animals, if you get to know them, they may be different than you originally had thought. Like I had no clue that they were so, so cool. Like these tarantulas. I was kind of freaked out by them, but the more I read about them, the more I respect them and the cooler I think they are. So these little guys, for example, another thing they do is they don't make webs like normal spiders. And I'm gonna do a little shadow here. I'll, I'll just do it. I was gonna do it with my coloring, but I'll do it right here. But yeah, they don't do normal webs because that's not how they catch their food. They actually go and hunt down their food. They don't have to just wait for it to hit their, hit their webs. But they do still have silk that they can, that they can uh, release and they can put that, what they do is they usually put it in front of their burrow, their hole that they hide in or that they live in. And they use it kind of as a, I don't know, like a signal if something's coming by the front door, it kind of captures them or makes a noise so that they know that something's coming by the hole. Isn't that crazy? So they still use the silk, but they just have a different way of using it. And just because they're bigger and hairier doesn't mean that they have to be scarier because they're actually not as poisonous as a lot of the little ones. All right, I'm gonna do a few more little things here. I think it's all I have left is just to add a little bit more hair on the body. And I'll do that with just a few little lines there we go on the body and the rest of it I'll just do with uh, with my coloring but if you want to also add hair to the legs you can do little lines all along the legs and make them so you can see all the hair I think I'm just gonna color it in and call it good but um, again this is your drawing you do whatever you want to do this is your tarantula and uh, now we got the main parts on there the rest of it's up to you so I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of this uh, sketch under here and then I'm going to go ahead and start coloring and we'll meet up right afterwards. How does that sound? Awesome. Okay, let's do that. And we are done. All right, you guys, I thought of a name for my tarantula friend. Do you want another name? It is Ethan, named after my video editor <laughs> and friend of mine. So Ethan, here you go. You are now an amazing tarantula. This was a really fun one. I'm so glad that we did this. I know, actually, there's a few of you that have requested that we did this tarantula, and I just have been holding on to it for a little while. And uh, I'm just excited that we got to do it. So hopefully you guys had a whole lot of fun before you finish before we go you need to make sure that you sign your name at the bottom because we're proud of what we make you need to make sure people know this is ours i'm gonna put my initials there at the bottom and little ethan is all done thank you guys so much for watching this video i love having you guys around drawing with me like i say all the time it really is the highlight of my day. So thank you guys so much. And uh, please share the channel with your friends and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Just wanna make sure that kids like yourself get a chance to draw 
um, some pretty fun things with us. So we do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every single week. But before you go, remember, this is the end of the week, so we're gonna be showing off some of your work here at the very end here. So hopefully one of yours made it in here. I wanna just show off some of your work in a little gallery at the very end. So thank you guys. Remember, be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. We'll see you next time.